Hey everybody, Hi. welcome back to the Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Alexander Pascal, and joining me today is senior designer Nick Donaldson. So we got that going for us. Uh, we have a thing that we're going to announce that hasn't been put in the title or put out anywhere. We're going to announce it in just a second. But first, Shelly, it's the news. So I don't have a whole lot of news items for you uh, this week. I just wanted to let you all know um, that the UE4 Jam 4 July wrapped up on Monday at uh, 0 hour, 0 a.m. Um, and we've got quite a lot of fantastic submissions for it. Just wanted to remind everyone to come in here and give them a try, uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, the submission forum is... Phew, that's, it's also on here, uh, submission threads also on the forum, so you want to go on here, check out all the submissions. I think we had a total of 35 really great games. Um, the quality is really stellar, and I'm having a, a lot of fun just checking them out so far. So uh, thank you to everyone who participated, and thank you to everybody who uh, witnessed it happen, because it's a lot of fun for us. So next up, I'm going to go to this thing first. Hang on. <laughs> Answers. Pew. So. Every week, we like to honor the people that come out to the Answer Hub and answer questions out here and give general good advice. So, we like to say thank you to the top three karma earners of the week. Our top three of this week are Prithvi Singh, uh, who won last week, I believe, also. Uh, congratulations on that. Expose and Luos. Um, thank you all so much for uh, participating in this, and thank you to everybody else who comes onto the Answer Hub and helps everyone out. It's always fantastic to see everyone getting together and uh, helping to s resolve these kinds of issues that you, you know, <laughs> bump into as game devs. Happens all the time. So, uh, thanks. Now then, for our community spotlight this week, I'd like to start off by saying uh, thank you to uh, Lezik uh, Goldski. I'm uh, you guys know I'm terrible at <laughs> pronouncing names, uh, but um, Lezik uh, has made an SMAA plugin. Uh, it's just, you know, I know that a lot of people have been asking for some more AA tools, and we are uh, working on some more in the future. But uh, as a kind of interesting little quick fix here, there's a really nice plugin. Uh, if you want to give it a shot, uh, come out to the forums. It's, uh, it's as SMAA, subpixel morpholo <laughs> morphological uh, anti aliasing. Uh, integration so you want to check that out he also has some great comparison shots and i believe also if you scroll down a bit uh john alcatraz participated in this a bit by uh, creating a comparison video if you wanted to get a better <laughs> idea of what you're getting yourself into with different uh aa techniques so pretty cool very cool pow um next up we have a video called unreal study dormancy um shelly i believe we have the clip for you it's just a ha really nice um visualization of some environments uh it's very pretty yeah, very it's serene chance sent this one over to me and um yeah i just i love these kinds of uh, gorgeous visualizations Nice. Yeah, those are just very pretty and thought I'd show that with everybody. Uh, if you are working on something out there that is a gorgeous visualization, a fun game, or just anything else that's kind of interesting or helpful to the community, please feel free to reach out to me, Chance, Jess, or anybody else out here at Epic uh, to get in contact with me because I love to spotlight items like this. And I have a bit of a queue now, but I always like to keep that full and uh, full of cool items. So just send them on over. And then... Um, the last item here is an application. Uh, it's it's a very interesting <coughs> thing uh, sent over to me. Um, but uh, yes, Media Room made this. It's a interactive portfolio. Hmm. I'm tripping over my own words here because it's kind of it's it says that it's an application slash game, but I kind of see it as a visualizer in a lot of ways. Um, it's sort of like how Marmoset kind of works, where it you know helps you present stuff and and light it. But it's for I, I think that the whole concept behind it is just that he wanted to visualize a lot of things um, like mm -hmm. buildings and items and rooms. So came up with kind of a system of, um, yeah, here you go, like uh, panners and, and blending stuff and mm -hmm. all this. It's very cool. Um, uh, here you go. Uh, you can kind of see it's got a lot of tools to it. Actually, I think we have a video we can play on it so I can talk about the tools you can see. 
Here we go. And uh, this is all available if you want to download it off of um, the forums. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's, it's just cool. a great visualizer. It lets you easily let someone who's not maybe super familiar with games take a walkthrough on your 3D portfolio. Um, little interactive cool. system that he's pre-built. That's in an interesting way of presenting your textures. <laughs> so yeah, if you've got like a uh, cool. something you visualize, yeah, you kind of scroll through it on, as a thumbnail in front of the piano and then you can jump into it. It's much more interesting than one of those flat <laughs> gallery portfolios. Seriously. It's like you can look through the gallery and then click on something and then go kind of explore it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much uh, for submitting these great spotlight items to me and uh, sending them over. Uh, and again, if you're interested in showing off portfolio piece, I highly recommend uh, this one here by Steven. Um, but Interactive Portfolio, fantastic software uh, for it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and again, if anybody out there wants to submit something to me, just reach out on the forums, Twitter, uh, however you can reach out to me, send me your stuff. I'm always excited to check it out. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's the news and community spotlight for today. And I've got Nick on to talk about a very interesting project you worked on a little oh, while ago. It feels like forever ago now. <laughs> it's like in the game industry, a week is a month, and a month is several <laughs> years, right? right. So, so it probably feels like it's uh, ancient by now, but it still has a lot of powerful mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, features within it. So why don't we go ahead and, and tell everybody it's, you want to? Yeah, Tell sure. Me. I guess we're releasing the, uh, the Zen Garden uh, demo that we did on the, uh, the UE4 launcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. so it'll be available uh, through the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, if we jump onto the main screen, we can go ahead and take a look at it. So the whole thing's going to be going live and free, and here you can have this if you want to cool. fly around and talk <coughs> about it. But um, it will be on the launcher under demo showcases, and that should be going live uh, pretty soon, actually, as we speak it will be going mm -hmm. live on the marketplace. Yeah. So so I guess we actually built this, um, I don't remember when it was, quite a while ago now. Um, but we built it for, I guess the original purpose was that um, you know, Apple contacted us and they said, we've got um, some new cool stuff happening and we want you guys to kind of build a, a showcase for that. And that was the, um, the new Metal API driver. Um, and so the whole idea there is that previously, you know, um, on an iPhone, you could only really do uh, a couple hundred draw calls tops, mm -hmm. and that made uh, developing things for for the for the iPhone or kind of any mobile device because you know OpenGL really painful, um, because a couple hundred draw calls is not a lot if you've ever done any kind of development before, um, and so we kind of uh, threw out the threw down the hammer at, at the, on the Epic art team. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a handful of, you know, a bunch of people who were not kind of, hadn't been transitioned onto Paragon or Fortnite or any of that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were like, well, what do you want to do? Um, and so at, I think at this point, um, Kendall Tucker, Paul Motter, and I went out for beers um, and decided uh, uh, to come up with an idea. And that's um, how the best idea starts. Exactly, or a few drinks, for a right? couple drinks. So, <laughs> we went out to the alehouse around the corner, and um, came up with the idea of kind of this Zen garden. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of those guys may have already had the idea. I don't know, but that's when we kind of we that's when we decided we really liked that idea, and then we shared it with the rest of the art team, and then everybody liked it, and we decided to go forward with it. Um, and so, um, what you can see here, I think Paul uh, built the majority of the environment himself. Um, I did kind of the first lighting prototypes. Um, this little fish pool um, that we can kind of play around with here. We wanted to kind of build something that was going to be 
really pretty and um, interactive as well. Um, and so we actually had a, a bit of a problem or a hard time while developing this was that um, the goal um, for showing off these metal drivers mm -hmm. was that um, we wanted to show that you could have as many draw calls as possible and just lots and lots and lots and lots of draw calls. But, um, you know, it turns out the driver is actually so ridiculously efficient that we would run into other bottlenecks before we ever hit the bottleneck of, huh. of as many draw calls as we could. You know, if you really want to show a developer that you can render a lot of draw calls, you you drop a thousand objects into a, you know, into a, into a grid and then you just yeah. like, look, it renders lots. But, you know, that's obviously not going to show very well and it's not very pretty, so... Um, you know, we, we kind of went this direction instead. Uh, this tree here was um, put together by Ryan Brux. Um, oh, yes. You guys have seen the, the voodoo magician that is Ryan um, many times on the stream, I believe. Oh, yes. He's a, he's a <laughs> fan favorite for sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and so he kind of came up with this ridiculously cool tree and mm -hmm. kind of Very reactive paint on touch. the leaves and, yeah, and it reacts and jiggles and they shake all around. And I believe this, I'm not sure if it's used uh, the pivot painter tool or if some other kind of crazy concoction that he came up with. Um, and then uh, effects guy, uh, Tim Alec is actually a lead effects guy on Paragon now. Mm -hmm. um, did a lot of a lot of these effects. Oh, with the, the GP, or the, uh, yeah, the, the, the particle particles, effects. Yeah, he just absolutely went to town with them. Um, that's right, and you can spin around the tree. This has been a really long, really long time since I uh, worked on this, so I kind of forget some of the things that you can do. How far can you go? No, you used to be able to go around the, other, around the other side of the tree, but I think we cut that when it came to, uh, to trying to get this thing out. Um, we can dive into some of the details. Uh, some of it's going to be a little hand wavy on my part because uh, we put this thing out in a hurry, and Ryan is um, a lot smarter than me. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, no, some of the more you did great technical implementations uh, were Ryan's. Um, I did make these fish here, and they're a really poor attempt at a flocking thing. But um, these are actually all kind of a whole bunch of independently, independently controlled fish. Um, actually, all of the animation on the fish are... Um, let's restart this so they actually flock a little bit better. But all the animation on the fish are just vertex shaders, which is kind of cool. Mm. Um, and there's some kind of, uh, kind of really basic... I'm not sure that we even have a flocking. I tried a flocking alg algorithm on them at one point. But I think um, it turned out just kind of a little bit too slow for the blueprints, all the blueprint stuff that I was doing. You can see all the fish kind of swim around and they have this animation on them. And that's just a bunch of sine waves. I can, I can hop into that a little bit later on. Oh, wow. That's, it, it's always really cool when we can just jump back into basic math and be like, yeah, that's, yeah, right? that's all that's really driving. All the on. stuff I didn't listen to in high school is <laughs> the stuff that I live on day to day uh, now. It's only I had been paying attention to yep. basic geometry. And these little touch ripples, which are kind of important for feedback. Mm -hmm. um, if you break it down, if you go really quickly, um, you can actually see kind of three independent blobs there. Um, oh, yeah. And this is kind of me just feeding in some smooth positions from where the, the touch input comes in and um, really hackily just adding them to the normals. So when you're, norm so when you're moving at a normal pace, you can't right. even notice. But if you kinda just cheat ripples along and like you that. move really quick with a mouse, yeah. you can kind of see how it breaks down the ripple effect. Yeah, they'll kind of just add in. Some other cr really cool thing um, that Ryan did was um, for the water here. You actually see um, it looks like a pretty it looks pretty consistent with a lot of our reflection captures where it's you know parallax corrected. Um, we didn't actually have any support for that on mobile, and so he did it all himself inside of the shader. Um, and then we um, it was really expensive with some really pretty expensive math, and so we deferred it onto the pixel sh uh, onto the vertex shader um, using the um, what do we call that custom UVs. And um, so we basically got it for free. It had some um, kind of semi-nasty artifacting around the edges. You can see, I'm not sure if it's really easy to see there. Um, I wonder if we can just look at it in here. You'll be able to find some of the artifacts. Yeah, so you can see kind of some of the stepping along here when I move the camera. It distorts a little bit, but turns out that's kind of what water does anyway, and so we didn't really care. Um, <laughs> and so this, <laughs> it, it <kinda laughs> they're like, oh wow, anyway. it actually looks better with the artifacts than it didn't than it did before. So this parallax, you know, there's a little bit of a hard time getting these to line up exactly, but all of this stuff here, 
these parallax ref um, corrected reflections are um, kind of all done by Ryan just in the material. You should take a look there. And so um, you, be, you guys will be able to dive into these here. He even put it into a handy little um, material function. And he, he always puts reflection. in some nice comments, which is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> this time, actually, <laughs> it was really clean. <laughs> Um, this is Before warned, I was diving in earlier, and I found a couple of functions that were a little yeah. So spaghetti. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, a <laughs> little, little bit of that. But if you stay on the, if you stay outside of here, you could probably fi figure it out how it works. Um, even if you can't figure it out, you could use it. And you, there's, there's no way I would kind of understand how that works right from the get go. Um, see, that was pretty cool. Um, and then the other element is the, <laughs> the raking stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. So, um, surprise, surprise, the, the crazy raking stuff with Ryan's again. <laughs> um, so I think he did this, uh, I think he did this raking stuff before we ever had, um, the spline mesh components. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this, this stuff is, is crazy town. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, unless it was, unless somebody's updated it since, I'm not sure it's the perfect example of how you should be doing things because we have a, a much nicer system for that these days, the spline mesh components. Um, but you could set up a very similar system like that with the actual spline mesh components. Let me see if I can find out how he's doing that here. <laughs> you know, in the, and again, if you, anyone out there wants to dig into any of these, now you have them, you should right. be able to open up and... Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. So you can see, you know, don't feel bad when your projects are a mess because, um, here we go, draw a spline with mesh. See what you did in here, Ryan. Whoa. Won't you take me to crazy town? Ah, static mesh component. So it's just adding a static mesh. Create dynamic material instance using this one. Yep. That's a Ryan material. Yeah. And look at how well documented it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's good. actually not too bad. It's not it's the worst. It's not too bad. There's so actually a lot in there. So what he's doing here, I think, is basically um, doing his own math for arcing these things along a spline. Um, and he sets all of the tangents and all of that kind of stuff in here. And it's, it's just, it's really, really, really smart. Um, but we do have nicer ways to do that now if you were to do it yourself, which is cool, using the spline mesh components. Um, yeah, Paul Mater modeled out almost the entirety of the scene. Wow. Um, yeah, it's really, really pretty. We decided to keep all of the geometry simple. Um, There's definitely a lot of stuff that was done in here to help it with um, general mobile, like saving draw calls and rendering, and you can see oh yeah. a lot of a lot of um, saves and uh, just poly counts in general by looking at some of the uh, stuff in the background too. Like a lot of the foliage is just like kind of planes that are mm -hmm. set up near each other to create a scrolling parallax effect almost. Yeah, and we took advantage of um, some of the optimizations you can use on mobile, which is the, um, for example, this has the fully rough feature on it, mm -hmm. which means that it's a, it's a lot. Oops. It, um, you basically make the trade-off and you tell it, hey, this is going to be a fully rough um, material, so take some shortcuts. You don't have to do a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the surface uh, shading that comes with having something that can be really shiny and stuff like that as well. Um, so it's a pretty simple uh, material that he has on a lot of this uh, big geometry here. Um, but one of the tricks that he used was not just uh, not just to use a tiling texture, but you can see how these edges here are actually really they read really smoothly. They feel like they're kind of actually concrete. Um, so he layers the tiling concrete texture on top of this one here, which has these um, kind of really gentle rounded corners. Mm -hmm. And it creates that tile shape. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, there's two. Um, there's this guy here, which has those tiling bits. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uses a different texture coordinate. So um, on the main tiling one, he uses uh, coordinate index 0 which is just kind of laid out in a really tiling fashion. I wonder if we can, um, let's pull open the mesh to take a quick look. Um, UVs. Oh, that's not helpful. He's uh, got them all UV up channel. there. And he's got them all up uh, in space oh. up there. <laughs> that's not it. 
So that's all the tiling stuff. And then which one? I think UV channel. Let's take a quick look in the material. Um, when you do tiling stuff like that, and you do them all in, in Max or Maya, you can split, spread them out on 0 to 1, or 1 to 2, 2 to 3, mm -hmm. whatever, and then when they come back into Unreal, they'll just pack down into all into that space, and so they look really messy. But um, the source file has all of the really inf useful information. So yeah, that's 0. And I guess he's have, he has all of those in spaces that are not 0 to 1. Um, and then he uses coordinates at index 2 here, which is, yeah, this one here. So it's really kind of hard to see. but um, for example, he's laid out um, each of these segments. Uh, where was I before? So for example, here. Um, so you can see how that's shaded. That corner looks a little bit rounded there. Mm -hmm. You see the light kind of folding off around the corner as yeah. I turn it like that. Yeah, and so he's mapped um, like this segment here. And he does it there too. This whole segment to like the full 0 to 1 UV space like that. And so he splits off this part here and, and maps it 0 to 1. And then he splits off this segment here on the right oh, yeah. and maps that 0 to 1. And you can see it right there as well. You see that nice soft edge right there? Ha! And you can see a little bit of an artifact that gives a little bit of away what he's doing there. He splits that there and then maps this one 0 to 1. And so you basically put that really nice smooth rounded normal on top without needing to do a whole bunch of extra geometry, like without having to do extra cut, 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 cuts here, yeah. cut, cut, cuts there, and do smooth stuff like that. And so it gives it this really nice poured concrete, this kind of like really polished look without yeah, having very really slick. rigid edges. And I wouldn't have even noticed that artifact if you hadn't pu uh, gone so far out of your way to point it out and call them out on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and this Getting is the kind of stuff you can do. Actually, you can see the, um, this was Paul's stuff, yeah. Oh, was it Paul's? Yeah. Getting so called out Paul. So you can see those little geometry cuts there that he uses to map. Yeah, it looks like he, ah, there you go. He puts a little edge piece around and then maps all of that onto kind of the, onto that other uh, normal map. Yeah, so that's how he gets that really nice kind of polished look to the, to the concrete. And it goes a really long way to making it feel really, really nicely done. <coughs> And then what else? Um, oh yeah, so the water ripples. Can you see? Can you see that distortion in there? Can you see like the uh, yeah the, the general kind of wave? Yeah, and then there's the kind of the you see a little bit of the light kind of scattering through the water oh, and kind of yeah. lightening, darkening, and stuff like that. Well, once we go under the water, it's all just a vertex shader. Um, and so we kind of do all of this math straight in the vertex shader. Um, let's see. So, as usual, it's all faked. Um, welcome to game development. Um, what position offset? Here we go. So I put a, I, I, I guess I put the same um, material function here. And, and when you're actually playing the game, um, the fish all have this on them as well. Um, and so you can actually change these parameters for wave speed and wave strength and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I do that in the world position offset. And then I also put them in pack them into custom UVs, and then um, then they come out of this custom UV here. And I guess I'm, yeah, let's see. Modulate all of the, uh, we can preview this. Oops. I guess it's hard to see in the preview there. But it, it does all of this kind of light and dark modulation as well <coughs> to make it look like, um, to make it look at the light is filtering through and kind yeah, of so focusing. So, so and it's not the water on layer at all that's doing that effect. It's no, just it's completely separated out. Actually, yeah. it'd be, it's actually just kind of a funny idea that you could just click the water, delete it, and the ground is still going to just... Yeah, yeah, still just kind of hide that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah, and then I use vertex colors at the top edge to kind of just fade it out over this period here. Oh, I see. Um, and so, you know, you get that really cheap vertex... Um, you know, well position offset stuff. And, you know, it looks really compelling. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It really does look like that's from the water itself. Yeah. Um, so I guess things that we, other things that we developed for this. Oh, there goes my microphone. Oh, no. <laughs> Mic down. Mic Technical down. difficulties. Sorry. There you go. We're good. Um, is that Daniel Wright? Um, I was actually just talking to him about this the other day. He developed um, 
uh, the static skylight just for this demo. Because um, previously, previously you could only do the stationary skylights, and mobile it was kind of too expensive for mobile. Um, and so he developed that, and then um, there's kind of too much darkening um, in these kind of under areas of of the entire level. It didn't quite feel like didn't quite feel bright enough, uh, and so he um, developed the um, single uh, lighting bounce off the skylight that you get with a, a static skylight. Um, and so that kind of did a really good job at fleshing out all of these surfaces and making everything feel a little bit soft and a little bit, you know, ambiently lit. <coughs> and so we, we got a lot of mileage out of um, of making this whole scene kind of really nice GI. We we spent a lot of resolution since that's kind of an advantage of mobile is that uh, you could you can guarantee there's a good bit of um, you know texture memory. And so we put a little uh, you know a lot of resolution into the light maps, mm -hmm. kind of up this quality. Um, and we did a lot of kind of fakery to to make sure that you know everything looked pretty nice. But yeah, I mean the the metal stuff was was really nice. We really did not have to think about um, draw calls pretty much at all. I um, mean it was a huge, huge, huge advantage over kind of the old OpenGL drivers that they had on on iPhone. What sort of walls were you hitting instead of those then? You said uh, you GPU. GPU, just general? Yeah, a lot of GPU because, mm. you know, it's it's still a mobile device. Oh, that's true. Power, low power usage and all that. Um, it was actually pretty impressive how much we did get out of it and things like this, you know. Um, shiny spheres always look really, really, really nice <laughs> because, you know, reflections look great and that's one of the advantages of UV4 kind of the whole physically based rendering pipeline is that this stuff looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, it does look really great. Do you know, uh, I see that there's like dragonflies in there. Are they using the butterfly AI at all from the uh, blueprint uh, hallway, do you know? I don't think so. These are... Uh, oh, well, those are, those are more of a particle effect, right? Yeah, these are all particle effects. This is, uh, Tim Alec actually put oh, a lot wow. of effort into these butterflies. Can, can you open up that particle effect? Yeah, sure. That is uh, those butterflies? Uh, this one's just a static out? mesh. Oh, okay. I think. He's got a whole blueprint here. Oh wow, blueprint good brown butterflies. Some of the stuff I didn't touch a whole lot. Um, okay, he's just hiding them in here. <laughs> he's oh, he's just hiding the particle effect in he's there. He's hiding the uh, all of these positions. So let me let's play through and see what happens. So when I when I say that that we didn't actually have to think about the draw calls a lot, um, it's kind of true, but kind of. The opposite was true in that we had to try and make as many draw calls as humanly possible. <laughs> so yeah. we actually had to go out of our way to to <coughs> add ridiculous amounts of draw calls um, because that's you know exactly the feature that we were trying to show off. All the pretty butterflies. This is Ryan's um, parallax corrected reflections again, so that these reflections actually line up as the camera moves around. Oh wow. Um, So these here are just, uh, these are all particles. And I know that in this, Tim Tim went out of his way to try and make it look as draw call-y as possible. <laughs> 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 and I, and I, th I think he has these like clusters of, I um, wonder if we can see it around here somewhere. I'm not sure where he spawns all of that logic. But you'd be able to dive in, let's see. Touchy touch this guy maybe. Whoa. Yep. Oh, uh, it's the water fountain. It's That's the water where it's fountain. all hidden. It's always kind of interesting when you're digging through someone else's project and right. you find the thing that's the actual trigger of something, uh -huh. and it's something bizarre and not what you'd expect, like a little frog statue or something bizarre. I, I found <laughs> some very some very odd things that the were the actual. Statue. Do you mean these little dragon heads? Or yeah, oh. <laughs> or something like that. Just these Th These have been around since uh, Unreal Engine 1. Yeah, Tim Sweeney explained them on the forums once. Did he? Yeah, he, he came in. What did he say? I, I think he said something about one of the artists just drew it up and they just stuck with it. But uh, for a monster, that's there? Uh, they they just needed like an icon or something <laughs> weird. I can't remember the exact <laughs> story, but it's uh, it's all on the forums because someone brought it up uh -huh. and thought that there was like a weird conspiracy behind it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff about our engine being really old. Like, um, I don't know if we still have it in the engine. I think we do. Have you ever seen that green mottled blobby texture? The green mottled blobby Yeah, it used texture. to be our default texture. Instead of the grid that we have now as the default texture, oh, yeah. we used to have this like green speckly one, and no one knows what it was, but it was the default texture, and it just it was just green and weird. And it's, um, I think it got replaced only when we 
maybe when we decided to go um, free or like open to everybody, something like that. I can't remember. But yeah, some of those things have been around forever. Yeah, people always find little references to, to stuff that's been in there, like Kismet and whatnot. So it's always fun to go digging through our projects and see a little bit of epic history hidden into something. Right. <laughs> Butterfly flock, here we go. Oh, wow. So it has a very large area. Oh, geez. Flock, moving flock. There oh, we go. Okay, so there is, a, there is just a basic particle effect in Cascade you can check out. Yeah, and there's a whole bunch of... Did you, lose <laughs> did you zoom yep, out too far? I zoomed out infinitely far. There you go. There we go. So he's doing these with meshes. Mesh data. Wow, those are individual butterflies. Oh, wow. I swear he had the big old ones too. Like big groups of meshes. Wow. Is this really? Oh, yep. Look at that. 250 butterflies of this type and then 330 of that type and about a hundred of the other two combined. So yeah, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of meshes and of, of, of draw calls in there. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a ton. I mean, that's a, I mean that was the point of, of showing it off too. Right. Um, oh yeah, and so then the whole kind of pull out thing, the whole reveal, um, we, we were developing all of this for you know, for the weeks that we were building this for. Mm -hmm. And then kind of at the last minute, I guess maybe in the last couple of weeks or something, we decided like, you know, what's the, what's the finishing thing? What's the, how can we make something, you know, more grand, grandiose? And we were like, oh, what if the whole thing is on a giant floating island? Um, and we kind of did that the last minute. Because um, it was, we kind of built it to, to kind of go with the, um, we wanted something, some kind of outro of to, to happen when kind of Tim walked off stage or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the uh, big uh, the big uh, reveal ending. We yeah, I've noticed that we tend to do that in a lot yes. of things. Like if you see the kite demo, it ends with the big vortex of kites, and uh, everything always has to end in something epic. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. It's kind of thematically suiting, right? You want to kind of finish with something really big and fun that leaves you something fun. Yeah, this is always... This is <laughs> <laughs> at this point, at this point, Nick's just having this a is good just time as, with it. This is just as satisfying as we hoped it was when we, when we put it together. <laughs> like, oh, we're going to rake some sand. It'll be really pleasant. <laughs> it really is. It's great. It's a good time. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's all the big stuff. All right. Um, we just have a, a couple of questions uh, on here. Yeah. I'm not sure if uh, you have the answer, but we'll give it a shot here. Um, uh, does this take advantage of uh, SD820 on Android Vulkan? Uh, SD820. Or does it take advantage of Vulkan? Vulkan, no. no. Well, uh, actually, I don't know. It doesn't. Um, that is something that the engine team is working on, okay. um, I believe, since we, we gave the, um, the Vulkan demo uh, with the Samsung stuff a while ago. Um, but this no, this one was built to take advantage of metal that we built in then. And so the engine does currently does metal, and they are still has that that may or may not have reached a, a public release yet. The Vulcan support. Uh, it should be in four twelve for base Vulcan okay. should be in there, but I think you have to get it off of um, right, right. GitHub instead of out of the binary in order to have it. Yeah. yeah. Um, alrighty. Um, let's see here. Um, and do you know about anything with, uh, um, I don't think that, so to be clear, um, mm -hmm. uh, Nick's not working on a, um, or is not working in the mobile rendering side of things currently. No. Um, so, um, you're probably not going to have any answers about foliage or static lighting and mobile, uh, coming in the future. No, not so, really. Um, unfortunately we don't have the proper person on for that question. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're, uh. We're basically good on those. Here's our fish as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can take so a look at this guy here, we wanted to make him a little more animated. Um, so this guy's kind of animated in a really basic fashion. You can see the whole ball of kind of twisting here. Um, so you can see this here is the world position offset for the water distortion. And so I just layered that on top of everything else that's happening. So mm -hmm. he distorts underwater as well. Um, and it's all that material that's creating that movement. Yeah. What and happens if you put it on a block? The does block? Yeah, does like the block start to swimming? Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> so it uses vertex colors, um, oh. and 
These are vertex colors, and let's see, fish we can put. I wonder if we can see this. Um, <laughs> he's scaled a little bit funny. Let's see, maybe two, three. Oh, okay, there you something go. Something like that. Yeah. Um, if we look at vertex colors here and we visualize it, yeah, you can see all the different layers. And that's all that's really going on. Like that, uh -huh. the mesh is totally static. It's the material that yeah. we're seeing. So you've got the red channel, that's for kind of his head. Green channel. This might be the wrong version of the fish. He might be a bit funny. Um, green channel is kind of for the mid section. Oh, no. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. And then blue channel was for the uh, little flippers. Let's make sure I have that right version of the fish. Yeah, I guess it is. And so the little flappers, you know, each, uh, if we go in the material here, um, it drives a series of lerps between, um, between these kind of rotate about axis nodes. And so you can use these to, like the whole thing will here will just rotate this way like that. And so the fish, like his whole core will rotate this way. And then the head will rotate. Um, I wonder if we can see that here. Rotation amount. Yeah, there's like a middle offset and the head offset. And so the head starts rotating a little bit sooner, and then the middle rotates offset, and then the tail rotates a little bit behind that. And so everything is, you know, it's just a really simple kind of rotation layering system. That's there. so clever. It's just so. it's just a series of rotations basically to yeah, create the just blending together. wave effect. And then the hands just kind of go up and down on a sine wave and it blends those in separately as well. So Shelly, I hope that you had like a full screen version of Nick doing the hand thing because we need a <laughs> We're gonna to need it. we're gonna need gifs of this. Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, wow. there he is. Oh wow! And yeah, from the top view, you can't yeah. even see the uh, fins kind of have that distortion to them. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you can just ass and so that kind of they water kind of movement around. trick. I gets think he's too. actually even a little bit bigger than that because those are all in world space. So maybe if he goes four or five, then the distortions get even a little bit less, and he just kind of looks like he's swimming. Yeah. What's the performance like on that versus just animating a skeletal mesh? Way cheaper. Basically, Way cheaper. yeah, like uh, on a mesh like this, I think he's, how many vertices is he? He can't be a whole lot. He looks pretty bad up close, honestly. Um, 250 verts. Okay. And so the cost on him is, is practically negligible, even on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. You just wouldn't, you could turn it off and you wouldn't notice the difference uh, from a performance perspective. And so... Um, Oh, yeah, I even have like a little bit of manual control in here, too. I think I have like a left and right, um, mm -hmm. like a turn amount. Oh. Um, and so, so let me see. So theoretically, if someone opened this project up, they could take this guy out and use that turn amount to almost drive a movement yep. out of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you would never so have to actually do any skeletal animation whatsoever. So let's see if I can make that real time. Yep. And if I go turn, let me see, one. Makes him, yeah, it bends him to the right. And then minus one bends into the left. Um, oh wow! So yeah, you could have so your left and right drive it from one to minus one, and wow. Yeah. So so I use the logic in the blueprints for when they need to turn. It basically does a little dot product check and finds out if it's to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. And so when, as he's turning, it just turns to the left, and then as he straightens up, he just zeroes out. And if he needs to turn right, if he's, if he's actually turning to his right, then it does the positive turn, this oh. way and that way. Um, and you can change the scale of the turn, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, just fully, you know, vertex, vertex-based animation, and stuff like that. Especially for flocks of, cre of fish, I think, I think we ended up having something like fifty fish or some, something like that. Um, and when you have that many in the level all at once, then you know things start to get really expensive with skeletal animation. Fish. Yeah, so you can see all the fish that were spawned. One, two, three. Lots of fish. Oh my goodness. Lots of them. We added them until they started bringing the frame rate down. <laughs> and in fact, yep, there is going on 100 fish in here. Something like that. More? Yeah. Oh, wow. 100 fish. 100 fish. 100 fish. That's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to include that in the uh, 413 update uh, features list. Now Included with more fish. 100 fish. 101 in the next update. Yeah. <laughs> one better fish is every, got every update. You always, exactly. One more fish. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really great. Um, and it's pretty interesting to just think about how, um, like you were saying, the, when you have 100 fish up there, when mm -hmm. you're doing this based off of the vertex animation, off of the material versus yeah. doing this with skeletal animation, the, the difference is massive. 
just because um, when you're doing skeletal animations, that's a lot to take in. It's not just the animation, but the position of all the bones and all that that are right. constantly changing. It just starts to get really, really expensive, yeah. or something, especially when you have a hundred of them that you're animating. So, yeah, it yeah. turned out pretty well, I think. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's uh, pretty impressive, especially just because of what it is. It's just throw as much as we can at you. Uh, mm -hmm. Butterflies, fishes, uh, you know, cherry blossoms, all that. And dragonflies, those are still nice. Yeah, and you could probably you could probably tear apart the way Ryan did this. I don't know where this tree is right now. I mean oh, the, well, the tree spawns in. It's like I, I actually yeah. was deconstructing it earlier because I found it fascinating oh, that yeah. it wasn't there. Yeah, it's it a series of these points that end up snapping in branches together. Yeah. So Here if you are. wanted to learn how to make a very wow. interesting sort of procedural tree, there you go. Yeah. And then Ryan collapsed them all down to their little kind of they have like a local collapse point, I guess, and mm -hmm. then they all. Yeah. Uncollapse when you when the when the whole thing gets triggered off. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, that's that was the one that you can actually see my efforts on the side where I'm like, well, I'm gonna just take a look at it and straighten it up a little. Bit. Here, yeah. But Ryan, uh, this is all in wizard speak right now. Exactly. So we'll have to probably do a cleanup pass on this. Ryan is in fact a wizard. <laughs> yeah. That is a fact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, we couldn't get him on the stream this time. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh. Um, but yeah, um, is good yeah I think yeah that's it. i that's think, that's I think much that's all the, the features on there but um the major bases yeah. uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and showing us everything and and uh, this should be on the marketplace if not already um very very soon as i'm saying this so it should be under marketplace um uh, showcase demos i think is what it's categorized under mm -hmm. uh, check it out download it reuse it how you like it's just like our other showcases and all that we want you to have it so you can go crazy with it and see how we handle high-end mobile rendering uh especially like uh with metal which yeah, is yeah. pretty cool mm -hmm. so um let's see here uh uh, next week it'll be Ian and I on the training stream and uh, we'll have a lot of fun there. So we'll see you all then. But uh, thank you all for joining us and uh, you know, have a good one. Cool. See, see ya. ya.